What is Revenue Assurance, a beginner's guide to revenue assurance? This presentation is actually the first in a series that we will be presenting. The series, A Beginner's Guide to Revenue Assurance, will try to provide people with the answers to some of the basic questions that people typically come up with when looking at a new area. We are going to try to answer the questions of who, what, where, when, how, and why. What is revenue assurance? Why use it? Where does it get applied? When are companies most likely to employ it? How do they typically put it into action? And who are the people behind making it work? If you're like most people in the telecommunications industry, you're vaguely familiar with the revenue assurance discipline. You may also be curious and interested in some of the many benefits that it promises. Unfortunately, you're also probably pretty confused. There's a lot of different stories out there and a lot of claims made, made by a lot of people. Suppose that experts from software companies, consultants, gurus of all kinds, all make claims about revenue assurance, but all of the claims are different. If you've had any time talking with revenue assurance professionals, one thing's for sure. They talk about technical things, they get very excited about things that don't seem very important, and they're very complicated, often irrelevant, and they many times seem to be quite boring. Of course, in the telecommunications industry, the term revenue assurance has a special meaning. In telecoms, we've developed a special need and a specialized discipline designed to target many of our unique problems. Over the years, these disciplines have informally been developing and are known as revenue assurance. In most telcos, revenue assurance focuses on leakage containment, that is, finding places where revenue has been earned and lost because of some kind of operational breakdown. Over 60% of the telcos report that what they call fraud management is under the revenue assurance group. And more and more telcos are reporting that they use revenue assurance to help with revenue accounting, with the integrity of billing systems, with margin management, marketing assurance, provisioning, credit management, the integrity of sales channels, and the revenue losses associated with breakdowns in supply chains. That's a pretty exhaustive list. In 2007, GRAPA, the Global Revenue Assurance Professionals Association, was formed. It was formed in order to help standardize, professionalize, and promote the systematic, practical, and scientific application of the revenue assurance disciplines to the industry. It was clear and is still clear that revenue assurance is becoming more and more important to telecoms management and for that reason it's important that we come up with a standard set of methods for making revenue assurance as efficient and as effective as possible. As of 2011, GRAPA has proven over 5,000 members and over 1,000 people have been certified as GRAPA certified professional practitioners of revenue assurance. Our formally published and ratified standards are practiced by over a thousand telecoms around the world. What kind of companies are practicing the GRAPA standards-based revenue assurance approach? Well, we have hundreds of telecoms in Europe, North America, South America, the Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Companies of every type, GSM, wireline, CDMA, cable, satellite, DSL, and fiber content providers all subscribe to the GRAPA standards. Size seems to be no factor in how critical the GRAPA standards seem. Our membership goes from the very small operator to the very large and both startups and longtime incumbents all make use of our standards-based approach. So given those credentials, what does GRAPA say the definition of revenue assurance is? Well, according to the GRAPA standards, revenue assurance is the systematic, independent application of a set of standard methodologies that are employed to identify, quantify, report, remedy, and contain risks to telecoms revenue in all of its forms. Let me take a look at this sentence and break it down a little bit. According to the GRAPA standards, revenue assurance is first of all systematic. It's a step-by-step -step approach that can be repeated and followed by anyone. Second of all, it's an independent application. 
It's not applied by the people that do the operations. It's applied by somebody from the outside who can be independent and make sure it's being done right. And it's a set of standard methodologies. It's things that are repeatable, definable, and teachable. These systematic, independent, standard methodologies are employed to help management to know where the risks are as quickly as possible, how big they are, how they make sense in financial terms, have that reported to them, and then have the team work with them to try to fix it as quickly as possible. So how is this done? Well, the GRAPA standards define what we call the revenue assurance life cycle, which is the three critical revenue assurance functions, forensics, corrections, and compliance. The life cycle defines how to organize, measure, capture, and control a revenue assurance activity. The first discipline is called forensics. Forensics is the investigation of cases, cases, problems, and issues. Forensics analysis determines the root cause of the problem, where that leakage or fraud thing came from in the first place, and develops a standardized measurement of risk, and then recommends remedies to management. The forensics person is a highly specialized professional who makes use of all aspects of an analytical techniques. The GRAPA standards define five basic methods, risk analysis, exchange analysis, systems, process, and quantitative and numerical analysis as the core methods. The standards define how these methods are practiced and provide practical ways to apply them to any telecommunication situation. C-level managers said that even though they had a good forensics team who could find problems, what they really needed was someone who could help with the corrections. And so many, although not all, revenue insurance departments also take on the corrections mission. Under GRAPA standards and under revenue assurance, corrections has a specific um, application. Corrections are the elimination or containment of risks to revenues through the implementation and monitoring of controls. A control is simply a change to policy, a system, or the creation of a report or a job that keeps an eye on a risk in order to help adjust that risk in alignment with management's appetite for risk. A correction can be a very minor thing like the tuning of a car, like for example, checking to make sure that the billing system rates are correct or it can be a major renovation like putting a whole new sales commission policy system in place. Whether the corrections are small or big depends completely upon how much risk is discovered by the forensics analyst and how much management is concerned about putting a containment on that risk. The job of the revenue assurance person is to identify the need for c the control, help design the control, build a consensus between the parties involved on how best to implement the control and then make sure that the correction occurs. The primary responsibility to do the correction is on the operational management team. Work may be delegated to IT, systems development teams, outside consultants, business process engineers. The revenue assurance team may themselves implement the solution when called on to do so. The key to the making the decision of our corrections boils down to, will the solution be cost effective? Is it based upon consensus between all the different parties involved? Is it responsive to management's focus? And can it be implemented quickly? Corrections is all about standard controls under the GRAPA framework. GRAPA publishes many standard controls for many of the different revenue streams and aspects of revenue assurance in all different types of telcos. These standard controls mean that there's a standardized way to measure anything. And our standard controls are what we call logical controls. They apply no matter what technology, no matter what system, software, hardware, or generation you have in place. There are vertical controls like audits, ratio reports, change management procedures, and in-stream alarms and horizontal controls like synchronizations and recons. The application of the right standard control to the right problem is the key to the success and standardization of the revenue assurance discipline. 
after controls have been put in place, of course, it's still not going to be enough because just because I put the control there doesn't mean anybody's going to run it. So when management is concerned about whether controls will be implemented properly and as designed or not, they'll call on Revenue Assurance to perform the compliance function. Compliance is making sure that the controls are running the way that they should. There are many methods that Revenue Assurance uses to implement compliance. From a simple random audit of the controls to a more comprehensive execution of what we call a coverage contract. Under coverage contracts, the operational management teams agree with Revenue Assurance about what should be checked and how often, and then the Revenue Assurance team checks to make sure that it's being done. Whether you're a brand new startup telco or a wireline telco that's been in business for over 100 years, the practice of revenue assurance is going to be unique to your operations. The practices will be as varied as your operations and your country and your culture. Some people use them in very limited capacities in only some domains or only to do some jobs. Other people use them everywhere. It's this, more than anything else, that seems to be the major reason for the confusion about revenue assurance, the wide breadth and depth of applications of the discipline. The key issue is that revenue assurance can be done by anyone, and in the perfect world there would be no need for revenue assurance people. But because of the rapid change, the rapid pace of growth in a telecom, Operational managers and teams can't keep up with the change and many times revenue assurance is brought in to fill in when other watchdog operational groups or methods can't do it fast enough. So there you have the revenue assurance person, part detective, part policeman, part repairman, part auditor. An all round person focused on one thing and on one thing only, the integrity and maximization of revenues generated to the telecom. If you'd like to know more about the Revenue Assurance Standards and the way the Grappa Standards are applied in organizations, the quickest, easiest way to do that is to get a copy of the Grappa Standards. They're free to anyone by simply going to the Grappa website at www.grappatel.com. If you'd like to hear some more about our Beginner's Guide to Revenue Assurance, um, look out for our next session, When. When do telecoms make use of Revenue Assurance? Until then... That's enough for this week. This is Rob Madison signing off and saying, be safe.